Hello and welcome to our third and final episode of the Histocon 2021, organized by the Federal Agency for Civic Education and funded by the German Foreign Office. I'm Vasily Gollert and I'm greeting you, all of you, from Berlin, from the capital of Germany. We had two great shows so far with interesting people, important perspectives on the topics freedom and remembrance. And I'm Sumi Somaskanda, and the topic of this final show is peace. Uh, when we look at the world since 1945, since the end of the Second World War, how has our world been shaped by cooperation and conflict? Was it a new beginning for peace? And how can we create and maintain peace around the world? Those are some of the questions that we're going to be looking at over the course of the next hour. We will have uh, video clips, fireside chats as well with a uh, peace researcher, Ursula Schröder, and also Viola Benz from the project Peace Line. We promised you more music, so we're going to see the hip hop artist Taiga Trese performing here on our stage, which you definitely want to stay tuned for. And since Hestacon is an international platform and we have our watch party partners around the globe, I want to issue a very warm welcome to this episode's partners in Algeria and Chile. Hello to you. And you will be interacting in the show a little bit later. And also a big welcome to the artist collective Tape That. They are here with us from the very beginning. This wall was white at the beginning and now we see the artwork is nearly finished. They are working on the three topics freedom, remembrance and peace and I'm very excited to talk to them at the end of this episode. And of course we have our community manager Esther who is the connection between us and between you and we are very much looking forward for you sharing your thoughts with Esther. Hi, Histocon community. So we want to start you off with a question. Um, would you say that you're living in peace right now? And just simply answer yes or no. And you can do that by submitting your answers at www.menti.com. And you can type the code that we're sharing in the YouTube comment section. And you can also share your answers, thoughts, and questions about peace, conflict, and cooperation in our live chat or in our comment section here on YouTube. So we look forward to seeing your answers. Now back to you, Sumi. Thanks, Esther. As all of you are thinking about that question, I have a question for you. Was the end of the Second World War the beginning of a more peaceful era? Well, on the one hand, if you look at the efforts that took place after 1945, we saw efforts to create structures that would create a, a more peaceful world, a more stable world like the United, United Nations, for example. On the other hand, conflicts and wars have continued since then, haven't they? So what is actually the meaning of peace? That's something we're going to look at in the next video. I truly believe the only way we can create global peace is through not only educating our minds, but our hearts and our souls. Malala Yousafzai, education activist and youngest Nobel Peace Prize laureate. Wars and conflicts have been part of mankind ever since. On the other hand, people have always made efforts to settle violence and create peaceful environments. But what exactly is peace? According to Johann Galtung, founder of the first academic peace research institute in Europe, peace is more than the absence of war and violence. In this narrow sense, we speak of negative peace. Positive peace refers to societies where citizens are not discriminated against or oppressed. This would eventually lead to more social justice with access to formal education, health care, natural resources and economic wealth. Thus, the concept of positive peace functions on many societal levels. How can we create peaceful living conditions for everyone? Many international and local institutions, organizations, activists and civil peace movements actively try to foster peace in conflicted areas all over the world. Since 1945, the United Nations, one of the biggest peace institutions, has tried to do so. Until today, they have been involved in more than 70 peace missions all over the world. With the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, the UN marked a great milestone in phrasing equal rights. These are vested in all human beings and indisputable. Yet, human rights are violated every day. People are persecuted and killed because of their religion, sexuality or ethnicity. Peace is not a steady state. Building and maintaining peace is a long-term process. It demands continuous effort and cooperation. 
every one of us can help foster peace and resolve conflicts without violence. What does peace mean to you and how can the world become more peaceful? Well, we heard just there, peace is more than just the absence of war and violence. But we want to get your thoughts on peace. So I want to put the question to our Histicon community. What do you think of when you hear the word peace? So think about that question. Before we hear your answers, we want to know the results of our first word cloud question. So Esther, what do you have for us? So we asked the question, would you say that you're living in peace right now, yes or no? And here we can see the results. And it actually looks like a lot of people are saying at the moment, unfortunately, no. Um, I'd also like to pick up on Sumi's question um, that she just asked, which is, what does peace mean to you? And you can answer that question in our YouTube comments section. And now over to you, Vasily. Thank you, Esther. Before the show, we've asked the Histocon community, as well as young people from our watch parties in Algeria and in Chile, what they think of peace and how does looking back help to think ahead. What is peace? Unobtainable. Peace is absolutely unobtainable. How can you be at peace? when some of your rights are being rejected. Being just like we want to be and free. Eh, si pienso la palabra paz, yo creo que la unidad. La unidad de las personas. Yo creo que es la forma en la que podemos llegar a la paz. Adapting an open mindset to other people, being accepting of people's different opinions, different backgrounds, uh, different cultural experiences, maybe. Is accepting and tolerating the diversity and they believe that diversity is an added value to the humanity. How can you um, expect to have peace in a country when you're not having like basic justice that it's like the main thing that you have to have if you want to talk about peace? When, when I hear the word peace, the first thing that comes to my mind is being able to go to sleep at night without having to worry about not waking up in the morning. There is, there is like truly, there is a lot more we have to learn from our uh, past mistakes. Other kind of a cooperation, we can see that we can't rely on each other, but we have to trust each other. No, la autocrítica y el que hemos hecho mal, eh, para dónde tenemos que ir, es fundamental a la hora de establecer eh, nuestro camino hacia el futuro. So we need really to use uh, history to spread awareness, to make people realize that war is not a situation that we want to be in. Thank you to our Histicon community for that input, and we want to continue hearing your input. So keep sharing with us uh, in the live chat. Now, Vasily and I brought some facts to share with you now about peace and what the post-war period has shown us and how we live with peace or do not. So we want to share some of those facts with you now because I think they're pretty illuminating. So after 1945, until the end, early 1990s rather, there was a steady increase of wars in the world with the climax of 55 wars by the end of 1992. 90% of those wars took place in countries that were called third world and second world countries at that time. And even though the United Nations and other similar organizations tried to foster peace, we can certainly say that the world has not necessarily become more peaceful. In 2020, more than 300, 300 conflicts worldwide were recorded and the number of full-scale wars increased from 15 to 21. According to the latest report of the Global Peace Index, the average level of global peacefulness has slightly decreased in 2020. One. So those are some pretty interesting facts that we wanted to share with you. We also want to say there are some countries that have served as role models for a peaceful uh, world. And I, w I want to bring you a quiz question that we're going to ask you to answer for us. I'll read the question out to you and then there are three answers. So the question is the following. Which country was the most peaceful country according to the Global Peace Index 2021? Was it A, Portugal, B, Iceland, or C, Ghana. Now, submit your answer on menti.com and type in the code that you uh, might have seen on your screen already. I'll read it out. It's 3079067. 
0.71. We look forward to seeing your answers to that and see who got it right. Now, uh, I'm going to hand back over to Vasily, who's going to be joined by a guest. Exactly. Digitally, we have invited an expert with whom we want to dive a bit deeper into the field of peacemaking and what it has to do with cooperation. She is a professor and the scientific director of the Institute of Peace Research and Security Policy at the University Hamburg. Welcome, Professor Ursula Schröder. Nice to have you here. Good evening. Thanks a lot for the invitation. Let's start with a question that might be simple for you, but uh, is actually the most important question. Why do wars and conflicts continue to break out? It's actually a very difficult question for us to answer, because um, as you've just uh, outlined, the world is now less peaceful than it was 15 years ago. And if you look back into history, we see that there has hardly ever been a time in human history without war. And the question, of course, is why? And as a peace researcher, I argue, and I would always argue that warfare is not in the nature of human beings. War is always a choice. It's a political choice by political leaders, by armed factions to resort to warfare, to resort to political violence, to reach a certain goal. So wars don't just happen. Um, but people think that they cannot achieve their political goals otherwise, like gains in power, gains in influence, gains in wealth and natural resources. And this is what makes states, what makes faction leaders go to war. Mm -hmm. Let's look back. What was the idea of setting up the United Nations after 1945? And where would you say do we stand today? The United Nations is an interesting one. It's been founded uh, in 1945 as an international organization designed to create and foster peace in the world. And it's the only global organization that we have to do just that. So we know that the United Nations um, are going through a difficult phase. We know that the Security Council, their largest and most relevant decision-making body, should have been reformed decades ago. And we know that the press is sometimes bad, but it's the one political arena where the world society can come together to decide on questions of war and peace. So what we should do with the UN is to strengthen it and to strengthen its mandate and to strengthen its funding. You've mentioned the, the bad press. Not all peace missions that the United Nations were involved in turned out successful, for example, in Somalia and Yugoslavia. What are the conditions for peace missions to succeed? Uh, let, me, let me contradict a, a tiny bit. Actually, peace missions, thank you, and peacekeeping have actually been surprisingly successful, um, despite the fact that conditions in country are often and have become more difficult uh, in the past years. So the data that we have overwhelmingly reveals that peacekeeping does lead to reduction in violence and also does lead to an increase in the duration of peace after conflict. So the data is uh, not all bad, but one crucial precondition for success is uh, the consent of the warring and conflicting parties in country. So there needs to be political will to support a process towards peace and negotiated peace uh, results and this is what has been missing in the past years, because the United Nations are now often called into situation where there is no peace to keep. There is no peace agreement. And this is what makes peacekeeping really difficult today. Mm -hmm. So um, what challenges do peace institutions face in fostering peace globally? So what, what are the biggest challenges? Well, if you take the United Nations again mm -hmm. as an example, uh, the challenges are that... Um, Peacemaking has become more complex. We live in a world of planetary constellations of globalization of large scale internationalized warfare that is very difficult to pacify. And we live in a world of um, shrinking economic resources for peacekeeping. So we have a United Nations that's underfunded in particular in the peacekeeping field. And we have global problems like the pandemic, global and planetary problems like uh, the climate crisis that require cooperation across political uh, parties, across states, and that just has become a really difficult game to play. You, you are stressing the, the word cooperation, and how important it is, but uh, maybe you can explain why cooperation is so important to actually make peace. Yes, cooperation, it's, it's a... It's a big it's, word, so isn't it's it? Finding, 
that we've seen time and again, cooperation is essential for the construction of durable peace. That means that one insight we have from conflict research is that clear and stable rules and procedures, think rules and procedures in a democratic constitutional state are helpful in regulating conflict productively and without resorting to violence. And this is what we want. We don't want to get rid of conflict. We want to move towards productive cooperation. And as we don't have a world state or a world government at the moment and won't have a world state, we need to build cooperative political arenas like the United Nations to, uh, to discuss issues of planetary concern for us all. As we know, repeated cooperation leads to trust building to clear expectations about what the other parties want and also about what they will do in a complex world. And if we don't have that, we have a chance for escalating conflict into violence. Mm -hmm. Look back, think ahead. That's the motto of the Histocon. What can we learn from the past in terms of keeping corporations peaceful? Well, the past, in particular, the Cold War years have shown us that Cooperation needs to be repetitive. It needs to be repeated. We need to have established ways of cooperation. When we look at the Cold War today, it's a dark past and the dark side of history to have two superpowers standing opposite each other, threatening overkill. Um, but what we've also seen in the Cold War is that established patterns of cooperation work reasonably well. So if we look at today's world, The security environment now is actually in some ways more dangerous than the regulated Cold War as it's, as it's more complex, less stable, involves more actors with changing interests and is there, therefore more in danger of escalation dynamics due to misinformation, misinterpretation of facts or mistrust. And this is something that the past teaches us. If you have stable cooperation patterns, if you have stable institutions to meet, to talk, to discuss, to build trust, warfare becomes less likely. It's very clear to follow you and to follow your explanations, but it might be um, a bit abstract for, for some people um, uh, watching us. So maybe uh, also a simple question, but not, not that easy to answer. What can all of us do to foster peace and security in the long run, like really every one of us? That's also a good point, because quite often, um, you know, we are being asked, you know, how can we make the United Nations better? And it's how we can do we, do we have to make peacekeeping better? The answer is yes, on those counts. But what we found again in the past years in our research is that peace starts at home. So peace is not something that is challenged out there, but something that is uh, has become precarious even here in Europe today. If you think of migration and the way that migration is being dealt with in the European states, if you think uh, about the COVID-19 uh, uh, discussions and debates about vaccinations, and if you think about the way that foreigners are treated also in the German context, the, we find that we need to focus on our own backyards, on our own schoolyard in particular, we need to teach participation and inclusivity and civic engagement at all levels of societal interaction because without a stable societal agreement that we live in the same society, that we share ideas, that we share norms and that we are willing to fight uh, for a constructive dialogue to overcome uh, conflicts and to, to mediate interests, We won't have durable peace. And we've seen in the past 10 years that we need to do that in Germany. We need to do that in the European Union and in wider Europe. And everybody can participate in that. But uh, give us an example. What can a Polish citizen, for example, if we stay in Europe, do? Polish citizen is obviously today a difficult example, as we've seen the Polish constitutional court re um, ruling on uh, certain EU regulations. So if, if we take an easier example of a German citizen uh, working towards the goal of European peace, you can start in a school of your choice and look at how inclusivity and uh, peaceful relations are built on in the schoolyard, on the playground. It's really old school peace education. You can look at how can children interact and how they learn to mediate their interests. And from there on, you can scale that up to, to, uh, to universities. You can scale that up to civil society organizations. It's all about informal institutions, formal institutions that teach us how to cooperate and that teach us that cooperation and interaction is necessary. And that if we don't do that, Uh, there is a likelihood that we have 
uh, societies that don't talk to each other anymore, that we have filter bubbles where people don't exchange information across a filter bubble, but where people talk past each other. And that is a really dangerous thing for democracy and also a really dangerous thing for peace. Mm -hmm. Let's jump back on the institutional level again. Would you say we need more global institutions like the United Nations? Let's start with the one that we have. I think it wouldn't make sense to build a second set of institutions as difficult enough as it is. I think we need a stronger United Nations. Uh, the German government has advocated for years and years to change rules in the Security Council to make it easier to cooperate, uh, to fund it better. I think this is something that we should support. The United Nations are far from perfect. The European Union is far from perfect. The OCE, the Organizations for Security in Europe, is far from perfect. But these are the institutions that we have, and they are far better than having no institutions. So if you look at the European Union, for instance, it also has... Uh, a, let's say boring reputation it somehow is there but in the end it's the one thing it's the most densely institutionalized realm that we live in that keeps us safe that keeps us economically secure and that keeps us uh, able to travel freely across borders this is something that we should never go back uh, from and this is something that we need to keep safe as the brexit has shown so my argument would be keep the institutions that we have make them better And boring is not necessarily negative. Thank you very much, Professor Ursula Schröder, for sharing your expertise with us. A pleasure. Now the question, what do you think? How can the world become more peaceful? Comment in the live chat or in the section below. We just heard from the peace researcher Ursula Schröder that peace starts at home. So on the individual level, peace starts within. And that's something our next guest, our artist, certainly believes in. She's a multilingual hip hop artist. She raps in German, Spanish, also Portuguese and English. We're going to talk to her a little bit about her music and her art in a little bit. But first, we're going to watch her perform. So please welcome Taiga Trece. Thank you. Yeah. Vámonos. Qué pimbo que te. Ah. And all my homeboys and homegirls. Mira homes donde estamos, qué tan lejos llegamos. Tengo imágenes grabadas de cómo lo empezamos en más de una década con chingo de bajadas. Llantos y velas, dolores y batallas Seguimos en las mismas rutas ya Desde mucho dándole a la misma puta Venimos de las mismas rutas Más peso, más rucos, siempre con trucha Este juego es luta bruta Ponte trucha, escucha, mira Watch las ratas, que no la pisa Ponte firme, ahí está la fila Tú y yo somos de la misma liga Por eso estamos Donde estamos, muchos se nos fueron, pocos se quedaron. Así es la vida. Después de la caída, un combatiente verdadero se levanta y camina la subida. Somos hijos de luna, hijos del sol, del mismo universo. Nos unen los versos de la cuna hasta la tumba, hasta el quinto sol. Somos hijos de luna, hijos del sol, del mismo universo. Nos unen los versos. De la cuna hasta la tumba, hasta el quinto sol. Somos los únicos aún parados, los pocos que lo lograron. Die letzten, die stehen von so vielen Homeboys, die kommen und gehen, die wenigsten überleben. Todo lo que sabíamos era la misión. Como lo hacíamos, era con pasión, cada quien en lo suyo. La lucha nunca para, cada quien de su manera. Por la misma meta, el camino es distinto. Por el mismo sueño nos encontramos. Cause hip hop don't stop, me creo chingona. Mi clica no es de broma, saca la mota, roll it up. Para que nos ponga en onda, this is hip hop. 24, 7 horas de puro corazón. 
Nunca por moda rechazos, nunca me pararon Voy con los hermanos que van por encima Marcha cuesta arriba, sin recapitular Que caminan nuestros pasos, deja huella Sé que Real Homes siempre se encuentran I don't deal with haters La vida no se busca, las cosas se dan Somos hijos Hijos del sol, del mismo universo, nos unen los versos, de la cuna hasta la tumba, hasta el quinto sol. Somos hijos de luna, hijos del sol, del mismo universo, nos unen los versos, de la cuna hasta la tumba, hasta el quinto sol. Somos los únicos, los pocos. Que lo lograron, die letzten, die stehen von so vielen Homeboys, die kommen und gehen, die wenigsten überleben. Respect and love. Respect and love. Así que, veme. Veme como tú me quieres ver. Me vale lo que me haces tú, me tiran basura a todos modos. Yo no soy la que tú piensas que soy, tal vez no estoy donde crees que estoy. Lo que dije ayer no es que digo hoy, si nada retengo, si todo te doy. Tengo mis lados, mi santo, mi diablo, la alma indomable, no juro a la Biblia, amén. Todo me llames y ya todos saben por qué entonces mamen. He escuchado filomenas y gritos están echando bajo mitos. Rica para los pobres, jodida para los ricos, y para los cholos y chola para los bichos. Yo no soy toda hecha. Ustedes haters, brainwash un manual que se le izquierda para la derecha. Le lo al revés, ponlo de cabeza, verá que parezca. Switch up, veme como tú me quieres ver, me vale. Me tiran basura a todos modos, veme como tú. Me quieres ver, me vale. Me tiran basura a todos modos. Yo no soy la que tú dices, soy la que yo me hice. No soy de ayer, tampoco de mañana. Soy hoy y ahora y tengo mis manos. Soy un ángel guardia. En tu pesadilla me caen celos, juicios, maldición, críticas Amiga, enemiga, con una limpieza me quito los ojos No me hechizan, son muchas a la vez No siempre la misma en el momento del roce Que se te transmita, a ver qué me ves A ver qué me ves, a ver si es cierto todo lo que ves Soy la sombra que te sigue si te domino la duda Soy la luz en el agua, el espejo de la luna Soy la voz en el rap, ni menos ni más Puedes pensar lo que quieras, bebé Quieres ver, me vale. Me tiran basura todos modos. Veme como tú. Me quieres ver, me vale lo que me haces tú. Me tiran basura todos modos. Ilumino la noche en tiempo de guerra. Yo soy la paz, utópica. Soy multitalenta de todo capaz. Yo soy capaz. No ves mis alas, no. Tal vez si bajas el filtro en Instagram Fotografías aquí no cuentan Es un disfraz, es un disfraz Veme como tú Me quieres ver, me quieras Lo que me haces tú Me tiran basura a todos modos Veme como tú Me quieres ver Me vale lo que me haces tú Me tiran basura a todos modos Thank you so much, Taiga Trece. That was yeah, a very powerful you. performance. We really enjoyed it. I mean, just listening to you, tell, tell us more about what you were singing and rapping about in your songs. Oh, you know, it's a little bit about to let the things flow because so many people always judge. Everybody has an opinion. <laughs> and it's okay to have an opinion, but people don't know you better than you know yourself. So it doesn't matter for good or for bad. I think it's to liberate each other or also ourselves from from all the judgment that come try to get us to live freely in a way in your right. in your first piece in your first song you were saying we are children of the moon and the sun i mean how do you let yourself be inspired where do you get your inspiration I from i think we all like suns and 
of the universe. Mm. And it's so nice because a universe is one verse, no? So we, we maybe we connect all together somehow, some way. Well, that feeds right into the message of our show, which is peace. So what does peace mean to you? Oh, peace for me is silence. Peace is strength. Peace is creation. Peace, peace is creativity. And, I, and also peace is freedom. And yeah, I think it's one of the most valuable things we have in, in this world. So I wish peace to everyone. Inside, outside peace. Yeah, interior, exterior peace. That's a message that we can take, I think, into the rest of our show. So thank, thank you, you so much. Tiger Teresa. We're going to see you at the end okay, of the cool. show again, so yeah. don't go too far. Bye -bye. Okay. Well, from Germany and Mexico, we're now going to go to our watch party partners in Chile. During a two-day seminar, young people from Santiago de Chile worked together in the Museo de la Memoria y los Derechos Humanos to explore and discuss their ideas on peace, human rights, and social movements that actually fought for those rights, both in the past and today in current time. So let's take a look. Hoy día vamos a hablar de los derechos humanos. ¿no? El tema de la declaración de los derechos humanos es algo que nos interesa eh, conversar hoy día. Sino comprender que todas estas cosas son procesos de largo aliento. Pero que es esto funciona en Estados Unidos y que esto... Eh, bueno, en Chile estamos actualmente dentro de un proceso constituyente que nace a partir del estallido social, un movimiento que surge el 18 de octubre del año 2019 en respuesta a los 30 años eh, del modelo en democracia, del modelo, del modelo neoliberal que, que se instaló después de la dictadura de Augusto Pinochet. Pero estos procesos de cambio social también han conllevado una serie de, de, de violencias que se han ido posicionando no solo a nivel institucional, sino que también en, en, digamos, en manifestaciones, con con represión, etc. En este taller hablamos de la Declaración Universal de los Derechos Humanos que marcó la posguerra y hablamos de cómo se organizaron los movimientos sociales en Chile para exigir estos derechos, tanto en la historia como actualmente también. Tener la voz que muchas veces se nos ha nos interesa en el taller afinar algunos conceptos teóricos, pero sobre todo nos interesa escuchar a los jóvenes participantes en cuanto a lo que se llevan ellos de la experiencia histórica para sus movimientos actuales. ¿Qué son los desafíos con los que se enfrentan? ¿Cuáles son las nuevas ideas? El rol de las imágenes y las redes sociales para eh, los movimientos sociales y para generar debates pluralistas es controvertido. Lo vimos también en nuestro taller, en, los, en las conversaciones, etc. Entonces lo que buscamos es generar conciencia al respecto y también practicamos eh, nosotras, nosotros, nosotros mismos la generación de sentido a través de las imágenes. de cómo los derechos humanos pueden ser una palanca de aporte, de exigencia y por sobre todo de compromiso social y ciudadano para mejorar nuestra sociedad y de paso también aportar a un mundo mucho mejor. Llamativo. Yo me tomo la palabra de la compañera necesaria. ¿Por eso es una persona súper importante que ustedes estén acá? Que ustedes nos hablen a todos toda la sociedad. Creo que esta interacción intergeneracional hablando de derechos humanos desde de, de nuestras distintas realidades es súper interesante. Thank you very much to our partners in Chile for that important contribution. All right, now we want to check in on the online voting to see what the community has to say. So I'm going to hand it back over to Esther, bring us up to date on the discussion online. Will do. So we first wanted to know what does peace mean to you? And some answers we received were not fearing to lose someone you love, being your free, authentic self without fear, the ability to plan and dream for the future without fearing that your dreams may be cut short due to would-be world powers that are out of reach, and also that peace is the ability to resolve conflict without resulting to violence in any form. 
And then Sumi also asked which country was declared the most peaceful after the Global Peace Index 2021. And here are your results. Um, it was 17% to Portugal, 78% Iceland, and 6% Ghana. I can actually tell you that the correct answer is B, Iceland, a position it's held since 2008. And this may not be, really be that surprising since Iceland is a very small country, has a small population of just 400,000 people, and it also doesn't have a standing army. So I think two things that contribute towards peace. Um, you'll also be interested to know that Iceland is joined by New Zealand, Denmark and Portugal and Ghana ranks 38th on the list. At the moment, Afghanistan is currently the least peaceful country according to the GPI. I also wanted to just quickly present some answers to our question, how can the world become more peaceful? And I think we've got some interesting answers. Um, the world can become more peaceful because it begins with the individual. When one is lacking just basic needs like food, clothes, safe, clean water, definitely there's an absence of peace. So resources can contribute towards a more peaceful world. And another answer, peace has become a luxury for few in the world when it should be a basic for most. Empathy and going out of your privilege bubble when you live in one is a great step towards a more peaceful world. So that was it for our questions for the Mentimeter survey, but our live chat here on YouTube is still open for you to comment. And thank you so much for sending in all of your answers. Esther, and thank you so much for showing these answers to us and also for the interesting information. My right. pleasure. Thank you, Esther. In the late 20th century, Sri Lanka was shaken by a domestic civil war between Sinhalese and Tamil ethnic groups. Shiva from Sri Lanka talks about how he remembers that time as a young multi-ethnic man. A video clip created by filmmaker Pavel Franzusov. <laughs> We received our independence right after World War II. Before the British occupied us, our identity was a fluid concept. But the British liked to categorize everything. They formalized the divisions between ethnic and religious groups, and they implemented a system of administration that happened to favor one group, like the typical divide and rule ways of empires. Sadly, after independence, some of our own leaders were not that much different from the colonial authorities, to be honest. Almost all public institutions and public life has become highly politicized. This, of course, led to a society changing, leading to a horrible civil war, which lasted nearly 30 years. I personally find all narratives of exclusivity very difficult to grasp because of my family background. I'm from a mixed family. My father is Sinhala Buddhist and my mother is Malay Muslim, with many extended family members coming from various communities and social background. And what I feel about our people is that after nearly 75 years of being independent, we are still finding ourselves. My hope is for Sri Lanka, which actively accepts and loves the beautiful diversity that we have. Thank you, Shiva, for sharing that very personal story with us. Now, imagine this, two weeks by train and bus through Europe with a multinational group of young people visiting memorials and museums and exploring new perspectives on the history of the Second World War and also the division of Europe. If that sounds cool to you, it exists. It is part of a project uh, called Peace Line, and our next guest who's sitting here with me uh, is the project coordinator. So she's going to be sharing some insights of Peace Line, Viola Benz. Welcome. Hi, thank you very much. Viola, so I gave a little bit of an idea of what Peace Line is, but tell us more. Yeah, Peace Line is a um, project of the German Warcraft Commission funded by the um, German Foreign Office. And the idea of Peace Line is young people from all over Europe travel together two different routes through Europe, meet each other, um, visit historical sites, memorials, museums um, about World War I, World War II and the European Division, um, get to know each other, get to know history and reflect about their own position 
in history and in Europe. So that's the idea. We had two different routes this year. Um, the first one is starting, normally should start in St. Petersburg in Russia, going through the Baltic countries, Riga, Kaunas, uh, ending in Poland, Gdansk, and on the island of Usedom. Mm. Due, to the <coughs> due to the COVID situation, we couldn't go to Russia this year, so we started in Berlin, but it was also very nice. And the other route is going from Weimar to Prague in the Czech Republic, going back to Germany to the south, uh, Munich, um, Lake of Constance, and then going to France in the Alsac and to Verdun. So young people travel together, as you said, um, reflect their own national memories, their own national perspectives, see what each, where is the difference between mm -hmm. these perspectives and talk about why is it different, is it a problem that this is different or is it fine that everyone has his own side, but where can we bring this together to a European picture? That's a really comprehensive project that you just described. So how do you address peace within this project? So it's part of the, the title, Peace Lines. Mm -hmm. It was, um, the Peace Line title came from, from the original idea. It was um, 20 ideas for peace that were presented um, to the German and to the French presidents in 2018 from young um, people meeting together to talk about end of World War I. Um, and they said one of the ideas should be for having peace in Europe forever, should be travel together, mm. see what, were, what was in history, what did lead to war, and what can we, the young people, do so this would never happen again. So the young people, um, they visit museums, but they also visit concentration camps, really hard places to see. And if you have seen such a place, I think you will understand how important it is to have peace for the future. That's such an interesting way to bring that history into this young generation. But we have to say, you know, these participants do come from different countries, different cultures. They might have different understandings uh, of history that they might have gotten from their families, from previous generations. So how do you in this project deal with conflicts that might arise? Um, actually, we had very few conflicts at all in these projects. We um, did already four of the routes. One is going on right now. And um, so we had no conflicts about the different perspective, what I was very surprised about. Um, but if conflicts arise, I think the best method is to talk about why is it a conflict? How can we solve it calmly? How can we bring it together, these two positions or three positions? Um, and what is my position? What can I do, I personally do, for not getting this conflict in a big conflict. So understanding for other people, for other nations, I think this is the basic idea of peace line. Yeah, they're exercising peace and negotiation in this project itself. That's yeah. really interesting. It is. Were there any favorites along these routes that you've seen so far? Oh yeah, we had a lot of favorites. I think Riga was one of the favorite cities because it's a beautiful city. Um, we had a tough program there um, with um, really hard um, program with the memorial sites, um, but also Munich was a favorite. I think I brought some pictures, maybe you can yeah. have a look for this. We're going to put them up on the screen, I think, some of the pictures. That, yeah, yes. there we go. Yeah. Um, so this is the group, they um, were in Weimar, um, and what was most impressive for all people, I think, um, was to meet other people from all over Europe. Mm. And, and reflect about your own position. So this was, yeah, in Weimar, um, we have another one, yeah. <laughs> stuck see. on the bus. <laughs> yeah, stuck on the bus. And due to the COVID situation, you see, we had to wear masks, um, but at least it worked out. Um, what else did we have? Yeah, so you see on the pictures, they had a lot of fun, even if these topics were so hard, they had a um, really good time. And I think I brought one quote from Susanna. She's talking about what was most impressive for her. And I think all of the young people had a very positive um, route. They, they just enjoyed traveling with us. And they said it was so impressive to think about all these questions you were talking about in your history class maybe, but you're still talking about your own national perspective. You're not having these 
other side of the opinion or something like this. So the Spanish guy said, oh, we didn't learn about this in history. Or a Polish guy said, no, it was like this. And the French said, no, it was like this. So we talked a lot about what did we learn and why is it a difference between these national perspectives? Yeah, we saw a lot of smiling faces on yeah. the picture, so I, I bet the feedback has been good and that they're going to encourage other young people to take Hopefully, part. Hopefully, yes, that's the idea. Um, we, we sent them out as a peace ambassador, so they will talk about um, their experience in their home countries, maybe in their schools, in universities, to their friends, telling them what they, um, yeah, what, what experience they experienced on this route and hopefully they will come, all of their friends will come next year. <laughs> yeah, if we look at the bigger picture, b bigger picture here about fostering peace, I mean, do you think this is a good way to pass on the lessons of the past to not only this generation, but the future generations? I hope so, yes, because if you have seen what conflicts and wars can do, like you did it in concentration camps or memorial sites or whatever. And then you see that other young people from other nations, they have the same experience like you. They are not this part away from you. They are just like the same, but they are not speaking your language, but it's not a problem. Mm. They talked a lot of English, but they also talked like with hand and, <laughs> you know, if you don't know the words, you will understand each other. So I hope that the peace line and this experience from the young people will lead them to think about what is their own position for the future, what can they personally do for a peaceful together. One personal question to you, is there anything uh, in these peace line trips that surprised you, that you took away, that really stuck with you? Um, yeah, I was surprised that it worked out so well. <laughs> I was really, uh, yeah, surprised. and. Mm, no, I think I'm, I'm really happy that it worked out so well and yeah. that the feedback was so positive. I think there was no bad feedback at all. So That's always a good sign, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. Okay. <laughs> well, thanks so much for explaining Peace Line to us. I'm not going to let you go just yet because we're going to play a little game. So I'm going to ask you to follow me onto okay. the main stage so that we can play here. Uh, we need the big screen behind us to get uh, this game going. It's called Make Quiz, Not War. Good play on words there. So we researched some stories about peace fighters and we stumbled upon some of the most bizarre wars in history. So wars that I did not learn about in school that you probably didn't learn about in your textbooks. We're going to talk about them and you need an opponent. So we brought Esther here to play against you. So this is a, a nice friendly game. So how it works is I'm going to read aloud the beginning of a story to you and you'll have two choices uh, to guess the ending of how the story ends. You'll have two options and then for each right answer, you get one point. And we want you, our community, of course, to play along too. So type in your guess into our live chat. We're keeping an eye on that as well. So are you guys ready? I think so, If yeah. you're ready, then I'm <laughs> gonna turn my uh, timer on here because I'm gonna make it a little bit harder by giving you only 10 seconds to answer each. So I've got my timer ready here. So I'm gonna read uh, the first uh, choice here for you. The first choice is the following. On the 26th of June, 1969, the national football teams of Honduras and El Salvador played against each other to qualify for the World Cup, and the match ended 3-2 for El Salvador. What happened then? Was it A, El Salvador's players conceded victory to Honduras because they thought Honduras had played better, Honduras was eliminated in the preliminary round of the World Cup, or B, both countries broke off diplomatic relations with each other, Without a formal declaration of war, the government of El Salvador began airstrikes on Honduras. Which guys, which you think it is, A or B? I know that's a tough one, right? I'm hoping it's A. <laughs> You're hoping it's A, okay. So uh, and then I guess it's B, <laughs> just because it sounds so crazy. <laughs> okay, well, I'm counting down here so that our Histicon community has uh, two more seconds. Okay, so the ending is number two, if you, uh, B rather, sorry, B. So the war between El Salvador and Honduras lasted four days and became known as La Guerra del Fútbol, the football war. It cost the lives of 2,100 people and another 6,000 were wounded. That is an astonishing fact, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's move on to our second choice here. So on the 9th of May, 1386, Portugal and England concluded an eternal, indestructible friendship. I'm going to ask you what happened after that. Is it A, the 635-year-old treaty was still in force now? It is the oldest alliance between two European states. Or B, Henry VIII 
terminated the treaty in 1540 when a Portuguese princess did not want to become his wife. So your 10 seconds are starting now. Thoughts? So I think I was good with the B. <laughs> I stay with B. I'm going to stick with A. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like that you're at least not choosing the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Two, one. Okay. So the ending is the following number. Uh, I keep saying number A, excuse me. The treaty still exists today. It was sealed by the marriage of King John I of Portugal and the English princess Philippa. Also an interesting fact. Okay, last question I have for you guys is the following, and to our community as well, please play along. In 1972, the Nobel Prizes were awarded. What happened with the Nobel Peace Prize? A, the awardee declined the award, or B, no award was given. 10 seconds. I um, think it was A. I'm not sure if it was never ever given away. Okay. Wasn't that the answer? That's B though. No? Yeah, it B wasn't, wasn't yeah. that nothing was given away. A. Yeah. A. Okay, I you went to A. Okay. Oh, so I'm. A is the award was declined, yes. and B is. So you're yes, saying A? I, I say declined. Oh, I say B. Okay, okay. Given. I mean, you, yeah. you guys are on yeah. track here. Okay. <laughs> the 10 seconds are up, I'll tell you. The ending is. B, because of the Vietnam War, the Nobel Peace Prize was not awarded that year. So far, it has not been awarded 19 times. So, very interesting. Thank you both for playing along. Glad that you guys played and did a good job. And Esther, I want to thank you as well for keeping an eye on the community the entire time and bringing our community into this show, which has been really excellent. So, good. thanks to you both. Okay, so we're going to head over now to Vasily. Make quiz, not war. I think that's an excellent way to end conflicts. Uh, I would wish for that way. Algeria has its own story to tell about the historic date of the 8th of May, which marked the capitulation of German Nazis and the end of World War II in Europe. Our partners from NACI, Networking Arab Civic Education, invited young people to a world cafe and see what they did in their video. 8th of May 1945 marks the end of World War II in Europe and thus a day of liberation for Europe, for the world and for humanity. But for Algeria it marked a very sad one. On the same day in Sitif, tens of thousands of Algerians who had risen up against the colonial power were killed by the French colonial forces. Therefore, May 8th 1945 is a date with two tales for Algerians. This story was the basis for the Histocon workshop that took place in Ain Temushent in Algeria. It gathered 20 young people aged between 18 and 30. In a world cafe, they discussed how knowing their past can help to understand the present and build bridges to a better future. But they also challenged narratives in order to deconstruct and reconstruct the difficult puzzles the past gives us sometimes. How peace can come about despite this history, and what peace is in the first place, was discussed by the participants. We have to define what is peace exactly. Peace has different definitions, and that definition changes from, from age groups. My definition of peace is not the same as my parents' definition of, uh, definition of peace. And my parents' definition of peace is not the same as our grandparents. The group also discussed how peace can be secured. For them, these four aspects are very important. History. From a global perspective, not only their country's individual one. Also, human history in general needs to be taken into account, since war and militant confrontation are as old as mankind itself, and the status of peace is something everybody should acknowledge. Diplomacy. The peace processes would not succeed between governments and nations without using certain diplomacy. Economy. As one of the important aspects, the welfare of a country, or the absence of it, was one of the main reasons to start a war in the past. Education. In the light of educating themselves about historic events and learning from human mistakes. By the end of the day, the participants had gained many new insights, had fun together, and looked back together to think forward. Thank you very much, Algeria, for that important perspective. In our last element, we introduce you to an inspiring young man from Syria who has committed himself to making the world a better place, Ehab Batwi.
He is the founder of the Syrian Youth Assembly, an NGO that involves Syrian youth across the world in the peace building process through online education and debate club, among other things. I believe like everyone, like they have their own meaning of peace. This is what means peace for us. And me, especially as Ehab, I believe like peace is the place where we can live all together and building our society and participating in democracy together and have the freedom of, as a human being. I'm Ehab. I'm 29 years old, I'm Syrian, living in Berlin, and I'm the founder and CEO of the Syrian News Assembly. In 2016, in the World Humanitarian Summit, when we met with the other young people, and we come together to decide about we need to participate in peace process, in social and political level, and when we start to mobilize those other young people who have the same interest, we come and to see that there is no one have interest on peace building or democracy because of the less of higher education and development and access for a job. We're working with young people, young Syrian, in an age between 18 and 35, trying to get them engaged in peace process, trying to give them the access to higher education and development. Sometimes I'm shy, like to, to say the thing I'm doing, I deserve thanks for. No, I believe this is my my duty to do this for this community. Sometimes I feel like I'm very proud and very happy about the thing I'm doing. It's really affect thousands of those young people. Get engaged. Don't be shy. Like this is your right. This is your duty to participate in this peace building. It's important for you and for us as well to have you able to bring people together. Make it open for everyone, it's really make it different. Your participation in peace building it doesn't need to be like in political level, but also in social level. Sharing love, sharing peace, sharing education, this is what every do, and sharing food. Thank you, Ihab Batwi, for what you do and for that inspiration. And we are actually at the end, more or less, of the Histocon 2021. And I think we should talk about that, what is behind me. It is the final artwork of Tape That. You were working on this the whole time. And I think it's done, isn't it? Yeah, it's done. Um, so we used three different kinds of materials. We used fabric tape, paper tape, and some foil. And also we des uh, described three different topics of the show. For example, there is the colors are for the independence and the black and white hatching is for the conflict and these black lines here are glitch lines and uh, are for the transformation. And how was it for you working in this atmosphere, working throughout the Histocon 2021? Um, actually, I'm pretty happy because I like the... Um, I like the result of the artwork and it's not so easy to uh, make artworks out of a political context or uh, so in this way I'm pretty happy and thank you for having us. Yeah, it was a great time. Thanks. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your art. And now I'm very curious, thank you Tape That, to find out what will happen with this artwork. And therefore, I am welcoming Char Charlotte Jans, Tilman Schechtele and Stefan Hesse from the Federal Agency for Civic Education. You will now tell us what will happen with this artwork. Yeah, we'll take it with us and uh, afterwards we'll um, store it at us, but we'll keep on uh, exhibition, uh, an exhibition of it and you can see it next year probably. Charlotte, how was it the last two days being behind the scenes following the Histocon? It was so great. Well, all all people involved in it. It was so. It was such an amazing experience, especially after one year of COVID and all coming together. It was so great. And um, yeah, I want to thank everyone who was involved in it, and especially our viewers and all the people who did watch parties. Thank you so much. Thank you, Charlotte. And Tilman, now the question: What's next for Histocon? Yeah, we really hope that it will be possible soon to meet live and in person again. And we want to invite you as the Histocon community to come to Berlin soon, hopefully next year. We'll keep you posted on that. And also we will organize some online community events before that. 
And that's also an important question. How does the community stay up to date, Stefan? Well, uh, the best way to stay up to date is always to follow uh, the Histocon social media uh, channels on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. And of course, you can also check histocon.de um, for updates um, and subscribe to our newsletter. Then you can't miss anything. Thank you, Stefan, Tillmann and Charlotte, BPB team. Thank you so much. And now I think Sumi is going to join me again. <laughs> I'm, I'm here, Vasily. It's hard to believe and a bit of a shame because we've been having so much fun, but we really have now come to the end of Histocon 2021. We had three amazing live shows over the course of uh, yesterday and today where we got to learn from young people around the world. We talked about freedom, remembrance, and peace. And there were a few things that really stuck out to me through these three shows. You know, in the first show that the West and Africa are really dependent upon each other. So when we talk about dependencies and independence after World War II, we have to think about them with both at eye level and how important that is going forward. You know, earlier today, we heard in our show about remembrance that it is important to use digital tools, of course, to keep remembrance going into the future, but we have to do that with empathy, especially when it comes to tra traumatic events from the past. And I like what we just heard from Ursula Schröder in this show earlier, where she said, wars are not in the nature of people. War is a choice. Such an important message to take forward. What stuck with you? Actually, to be very honest, I was inspired by every perspective we heard in the last two days and all the three shows. But um, Ifa Hazel's project really intrigued me to use modern technology, new technology, to use um, these, these methods to um, reach out to young people, to reach out to younger generations. And of course, I was inspired by the watch party in Japan, seeing young people um, uh, being critical with their own history, with their own country's history. And also, we, of course, want to thank all participants and contributors, the team behind the Histocon. It's really a big and very nice team. Um, the, the Watch pa uh, Party countries, the Federal Agency for Civic Education, the German Foreign Office, and, of course, thank you, the Histocon community, for sharing your thoughts, for sharing your perspectives with us. And we just heard it from Stefan, but all of the videos that you saw through the course of the show, you'll be able to stream them online on histocon.de. If you miss something or want to watch it again or share it with your friends and family, please do so. And we also heard that the next Histocon is planned for the year 2022 next year. So we hope to see you next year. And we could not go without leaving with some wonderful music. Uh, so I want to hand over to Taiga Trese. Before we do that, from Vasily and I, thank you so much for being with us and goodbye. Worten am Himmel, Akim und Schachette, Gerüche bleiben in Erinnerung, por siempre. Lieben kommt, Gelüste verschwinden, doch wahre Leidenschaft ändert sich selten. La vida es dulce, Simon comprende, por mir es gibt so vieles, Kaite cabrón. Shiva, Maria, Mezcal, Tequila, Tortilla, Frijoles, Limon y Chile, Chili, Fras in Harlem. In Belize Barba, no me gana, bei mir ist alles hausgemacht. Pon la mesa para una alemana, ponte chida, dile Sari. Arriba los busca vidas, arriba los que buscan más comida, sabor sobre todo. Freude über Trauer, yo los, geh auf Beute, ja. Würze nach Belieben, ich bin Zucker und Süße zum Verlieben. Mi casa es su casa, ay que delicia, así vos se me mata. Bei mir gibt's mir aus was Leckereien auf dem Jahrmarkt, no te gusta? Schade, der Liebe geht vermeintlich durch den Mangel, si te gusta? Bon Appetit! Von der Hand in den Mund, ein bisschen Dreck ist gesund. Uh, Bugi! Hakuna 
mama, tata, taiga en racha, ves tu main vic pe glaita, la gata non pata de cabra, por las esquinas callejuelas, salvaje en la selva, ahí me encuentras, te porto plata, sama pata, corumba, dices tras cats betret, terreno mundial, ich sag nada más de en India, gehört en sein chas, von Teile bis nach dem Passat, voila Paris, das geht in New York, plan se fill the app in smoke from Kelly bis Washington DC, jeder Morgen ist erfrischend wie Tamarent, Wasser nach Tabasco, selbst die bösen Überraschungen, knapper ich wie Nacho. Das Leben ist Samba, Musik die Salsa, die Sonne ist mein Kompass, mein Weg mit Kompa. Wo soll Luis, Brasil, noch Mexico City? BJ3, San Luis, Potosi, La Pachamama vive. Ich lebe im Paradies, das ist ein Liebeslied. Ich schwimme in Rios, die Allegre sind. In Tränen, die nicht trocken, schick, schick Blumen aus Amazonien. Grüße aus den Anden, aus der Sierra de. Die Kicke immer, ich war immer fu. Ich geb mich nicht zufrieden, ich frag nur nach wie viel Komm mit Spielen, ich lass die Affen aus und so wie Haftbefehl Para que porque me gusta Ich krieg von dir nicht genug Von der Hand in den Mund Ein bisschen Dreck ist gesund Oye, pss, pss, que me trae la vida Oye, pss, pss, que me tiene más Oye, pss, pss, que me trae la vida Oye, pss, pss ¿Qué me tiene más? Oye, tss, tss, ¿qué te trae la vida? Oye, tss, tss, a ver, ¿qué te tiene más? ¿Te gusta? ¿Y si te gusta? ¿Si me gusta? Me gusta. Esto con...